All right, well, let's flip it uh, for a second, Jim, and let's uh, forget about whether we're in a matrix. But we are, I'll say it again, advancing so quickly that if you look at the last 50 years and project, I don't know, 300 years from now, we might well be in a position to uh, be gods ourselves and to create a world with uh, living, conscious, aware entities that may or may not have a soul, depending on whether you think that when we attain AI, the soul comes along with it, or what we call the soul. Um, What would be the ethical arguments about us creating such a world ourselves? Well, it it, it gets a little bit uh, far away from my... uh, I know it does, but why not? I mean, you're already far away from a lot of standard stuff anyway, (laughs) so take the jump. Yeah, I guess I I don't, uh, I mean, the ethical argument is, you know, let's not destroy the planet. And so if we can, you know, create something that is uh, self-sufficient, that works in a holistic way with uh, the rest of the planet, I don't see a problem with it. Um, Yes, there are going to be dangers to that kind of thing. You know, somebody may uh, subvert the program and, and create a Skynet, but... No, but this might be so small, uh, Jim, that it would be um, something you wouldn't even really see. I mean, it would be digital. It would be <laughs> not real in a way. Well, like a uh, it would, of an farm. We would, yes, that's right. That's right. We would be creating a world, and the beings in that world, the little digital beings in that world, who had awareness and. Uh, artificial intelligence or intelligence, why not just use that word, uh, and and free will. They could um, throw the packets around in their little world any way they wanted to, and we could sort of just watch, and we could either make rules or not make rules um, for them. And, I mean, what would be the ethics of doing that? Um, We may be able to do it, but would it be ethical? Probably not. It doesn't seem like it. Yeah, I, I don't know. To to me, I don't I don't see much wrong with that. I oh, I, again, I don't see I don't see the harm in it. And so maybe that's where my uh, lack of experience with ethics comes in. But hmm. you know, I, I don't I don't you know I don't view something that has a little harm to the, the you know the greater uh, good to be something that's unethical. Um, so, so, you know, so what? So we, so we create some AIs that interact with each other. I mean, we, we do that now. Um, they're just not quite as sentient as what you're talking about. Well, yeah, fact, I'm talking uh, about... The uh, stock market is, is driven something like 80% by AIs these days. I know. I know. So that's what I mean. We're moving this way anyway. So if you could imagine that we are a digital construct by whoever, then uh, we will eventually get to that place ourselves and become gods if we wish to be and create little worlds that are self-sufficient or destroy themselves or, I don't know, we can sit back and watch the game, see what happens. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it would be pretty interesting if it's, if it's uh, managed in a, in a responsible way. And simply by saying it or performing a, a few... Well, let's say miracles. Uh, That's really a good word. You know, like parting the little digital sea that we've created or, I don't know, um, creating a a god for them to see who then would go away and promise to come back someday or something like that. I'm I'm going to get in so much trouble. Oh, we would see ourselves in, in that kind of scenario, wouldn't we? It sounds very similar to what our own experiences are. Yes, sir. Uh, and as we become adept at manipulating digital worlds, and we are getting pretty adept, and boy, another 300 years, and what do you think? Well, there's another direction we could be heading to. Uh, I, I mean, and I think that's very likely what you're describing, that we're going to create these kinds of, uh, these kinds of AIs and experiment with them and, and watch them interact with each other and, and yes. so forth. Yes, yes, I, yes. I don't know that they will still be uh, sentient in the sense that we are. They, because uh, there was a, a good paper written recently by, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the, of the individual. It was uh, 
It doesn't matter as long as they system. think they're sentient. Um, well, do they? I mean, can they think, or are they just following following rules? I mean, as long as AI never really has true consciousness or, or awareness, it's always just going to be somewhat different. But why do you suppose that? You sound like you don't think AI will attain consciousness. And I, I'm saying, why not figure that when you get to AI, you get to consciousness? Because uh, that goes back to that argument about is consciousness an emergent property of complexity of computation, or does consciousness come first? And I just believe from all of the other evidence that, that I've been talking about that consciousness is really first. Um, if consciousness weren't first, you wouldn't have things like OBEs and NDEs and, and mystical experiences and, and things like that. So I, I think the evidence is strong that um, consciousness is primary, not emergent from, <clears throat> from the brain. So therefore, consciousness is probably not going to be emergent from silicon either or from a complex computational system. Well, maybe. Does your digital reality theory explain what I think most of the audience knows to be the Mandela effect? Uh, it does, actually. Uh, are you familiar with the, the recent example of that, the Berenstein Bears? Oh, yes. Yeah, that, that was fascinating to me. Uh, and I just checked with a whole bunch of friends of mine. Uh, most of them said they remember it, as, as do I, uh, being called Berenstein, spelled S-T-E-I-N. That's right. And, but if you Google it now, uh, everything is spelled S-T-A-I-N, and it's pronounced Berenstein Bears. Uh, glitch, glitch, glitch. That's a, that, that, to me, might be kind of the smoking gun of this whole thing. Uh, and and the, way it would, the way it could possibly work is, uh, you know, imagine that you have, um, you know, this, uh, this, this simulation uh, of sorts, and it goes down a certain path. And for, there's data that's created in, in a simulation. We all have data that's in our brains. We have data that may be in a, you know, kind of a, a sticky environment that, that we retain as we go from life to life. Um, and, and, and data that we kind of store away from experiences. Yes. And, and there are these artifacts in the world, artifacts like books and, and records in the Google index and things like that. So we've gone down this path, we've created all this stuff. And then for some reason, God, the system, all that there is, the universe, whatever we want to call it, has replaced some of those artifacts with Berenstain. They replaced Berenstein with Berenstain. And so now we're all baffled because what we have in our conscious recollection, they didn't replace all the artifacts. We still have in our, our memories the old thing. But the, the other artifacts in this, quote, reality learning lab have been replaced. So the model explains it really well. I don't know why this would happen. It certainly you know, know it might either. be another, you know, it might be, hey, you know, guys, here's, Here's another indication that you're not living in a deterministic, materialistic reality. I don't know. But okay. it, it really is a fascinating thing. All right. So let's imagine for a second that we're sitting in front of a computer uh, 300 years from now, and it's a computer we, we can't even imagine, but it can create these artificially intelligent, sorry, Jim, conscious uh, entities that uh, are in this world that this amazing computer has created. But all of a sudden the very worst happens, and it blue screens. Mm -hmm. Oh, damn, we don't have it backed up. Well, what happened to those intelligent, conscious beings that were running around in that, in that packet-tossing world? Uh, they're suddenly gone, and there's no backup. And, right. and, and so a, a body might say, well, yeah, but they're not really gone because, well, you know, energy is never really eradicated. It's still somewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not too sure about that. I mean, well, it gets, that gets to the whole thermodynamics argument about um, whether information can actually be created or, or destroyed. And I'm yeah. and isn't that, isn't that what that. we say about ourselves when we die? Uh, we go on because you know we're beings of energy, right? And but energy it, goes I, on. The, the word energy, I think, is used in a different context there, and I think that. 
you know, our this bigger system does have backups. It does have all of our history. It has, you know, the quote Akashic record or whatever. It has everything that we've ever experienced is there, which is why we can tap into it at times. Uh-huh. Um, so it's all there. So yeah, if you know, if in the current reality we blue screen by you know getting into a car accident, yes. um, we we live on because you know our our history is still there, and we can even look back on our life, which is what people experience when they do have those ex- uh, near death experiences. They they look back and they replay that 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 backup, if you will. Um, you know, so so it all kind of. It all kind of follows. Well, I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate tonight and going way out further on a limb than you are, and I'll get some terrible email, but I don't care. <laughs> you know, it's kind of fun exploring the possibilities. It is. And, um, you know, I do consider them to be possibilities, frankly. 